Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Anton Januska and today we're gonna analyze our Webpack bundles. So about an hour ago, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this, um, I or two hours ago now, I asked about what is the average size of your Webpack bundle without using any compression tools. That means no Uglify, no GZIP, no dedupe, no any built-in or external ways of compressing a bundle. Just what Webpack gives you without any configuration. And uh, about, let's see, a fifth of correspondence um, uh, said that it's more than five megabytes and more than or almost half said that it's more than one megabyte So I thought it'd be interesting to look at the bundles and, and see what's going on um, There is a way to look at what is kind of a nice little size breakdown What's making up the bulk of the bundle? Where does your actual business logic stand your third-party libraries and so on using the webpack bundle analyzer? So we're gonna go ahead and install the webpack bundle analyzer and and check that out um, I'm going to be using it on two different projects. Uh, one of them is an Angular 2 project. The other one is an Angu uh, is a React project. So we're going to go ahead and do the install over here. And on my other project, this is my uh, React project, and we're going to install that here as well. And uh, while that's running, whoops, while that's running, I guess that's gonna take a little bit of, oh, there we go. Um, let's go ahead and run Webpack without any configuration at all, uh, without any compression configuration, without anything else, and see what the size of our bundle is initially. Um, looks like NPM is still running on my other one. Okay, so it's 2.42 megabytes, that's pretty big. This is my Markdown Editor, um, Markdown Editor application that runs with an Electron. So for a desktop application, 2.42 megabytes is nothing. That's fine, but um, the parts that make it desktop are minimal. So that means that I have 2.42 megabytes for a bundle that could possibly de be deployed online. That's a lot. Um, so we can go ahead and check that, check that out. Let's check out the React application. There we go, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. Let me go ahead and zoom in for all you guys that don't like to watch high definition videos for no reason. We're gonna run Webpack here. And this one took a little bit longer the last time I ran it. Not entirely sure why. 1.1 megabytes, so that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, look at my Markdown Editor first. So we're gonna go ahead and do Wim Webpack config.js. And we're gonna go ahead and install this Bundle Analyzer plugin. Um, luckily, it's just as easy as copy pasting. Um, let me just show you what my uh, configuration looks like. There's an entry, there's a target, there's an output, there's a f there are a few resolves. I'm using TypeScript, but that's pretty much it. There's nothing really special going on in this bundle, in this webpack. I'm not doing any code splitting. I'm not doing any fancy stuff, no plugins. I'm not even using Babel with like a weird Babel RC. I'm just using TypeScript and, uh, and webpack. So now we have the plugin installed. You can see I have a plugins thing here, it's a new bundle analyzer plugin, I required it here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do write and quit. And when we run Webpack now, it should start a server on port 8888 um, with a nice graphic visualizing what our Webpack is actually, what our bundle consists of. Um, what's interesting, or what's kind of cool about it is that it reminds me of these disk usage uh, breakdowns, these nice visualizers that I, I use pretty much all the time to see what's taking up all of the space on my hard drive. So it's kind of reminiscent of that. So you can see the entire bundle is 2.24 megabytes. Now I'm not going to zoom in on this page because last time I did it, it got caught like in a weird crashing infinite loop thing. So I'm just going to read these off. Um, so the, the analyzer gives you three different numbers. It tells you the stat size, which is the actual size, I think, 2.24 megabytes. Parse size, so I believe that's how the browser actually parses it, it's 2.31 megabytes. And gzip size is 450 kilobytes. So you can see that gzip makes it, what, one-fifth of the original size, and that's pretty good. So 450 kilobytes, I'd feel somewhat okay deploying that. It still feels kind of weird because 450 kilobytes for an application that barely has any real logic in it is just an overkill. Now, so what's making up all of that size? My actual business logic is right over here on the right, and it's actually 24.5 kilobytes. So out of out of the 2.24 megabytes, only 25 kilobytes 
is uh, my actual business logic. The rest of it is node modules. Um, Angular, this is Angular 2, I guess. Or in the future, you're going to see Angular 3, or sorry, they're skipping Angular 3, Angular 4, Angular 5, whatever it is. It's the new version. It's not Angular 1, basically. It takes up 1.6 megabytes. And uh, I think that's pretty, that's pretty, uh, that's fine. Uh, Code Mirror, which is the markdown editor that I use in my application, is 400 kilobytes. This is one dependency I really can't remove because Code Mirror is just so in depth and so amazing to use. And I just can't imagine using something else, but I could possibly re re replace it with a different markdown editor. Um, and then down here, and you can actually scroll to zoom in. And since this is, and you can click and drag and it uh, re renders. So RxJS takes up 90 kilobytes. That's not too bad. Um, I remember that there is a uh, replacement library called, I think, StreamX or something like that, that the creator of CycleJS created. And, and it's similar to RxJS, it just doesn't have as many methods. So I'd be interested to see um, somebody build an Angular 2 like library with Cycle because Cycle has such a smaller footprint. We also import ZoneJS, unavoidable. Uh, Redux, Redux is 22 kilobytes, so again, it's pretty damn small. And CoreJS, which is pretty much polyfills, um, make up 50 kilobytes. What's in, what's kind of cool is that as the browsers get better, this is going to shrink. Well, you know, theoretically, but I know that every library is going to be using the next newest feature, so it's probably not going to shrink. That's 50 kilobytes. So it's not too bad. Um, there's a Lodash right here. Um, itty low dash with 5.7 kilobytes or 5.77 kilobytes being used and uh, a few other things. So that's a pretty decent bundle. Um, if you click on gzip, it kind of changes a few things. You see that the, the node modules take up a little bit less space, but not really much so. And that's that's pretty much how you how you uh, check out how you analyze your bundle. Um, sometimes you'll see some glaring problems, like um, at work. I noticed that Lodash takes up a large size of the application, and the reason for that is because I'm importing the entire Lodash library instead of the methods I actually need. And in fact, the methods I actually need are already built in now into browsers. Um, so that would be a great way to cut down on space. Um, you can also use uh, uh, code splitting. So if you have a library, like let's say you have this code mirror editor, but you only use it on the edit pages, you might want to split that out into its own file so that uh, users that just load up the, the entire application and are not there to edit, maybe it's like a view only mode, maybe they're not logged in, they don't need to have that dependency loaded into their browsers. Let's check out the second um, analyzer. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to go ahead and just go back to my, uh, this is my React project. And my React project, um, did I install the, yeah, I, I did install it. My React project is pretty much the same. It has a, I think, older version of Webpack by 0.2 versions. And uh, it has React, it has Redux, and nothing really else. I have another version of this um, application that's um, Electron-based, but it just imports this this application's main bundle, so it's not really any different. Let's go ahead and um, install the analyzer again. Uh, no TypeScript here, but you'll see it's a little bit different. So I'm using Babel, Polyfill, I'm using Babel Loader, um, and uh, let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab this line again. Now, I don't recommend keeping um, this bun this plugin in your uh, settings at all times because there's not really a reason for it. I think you should do an audit once in a while, maybe edit it out, maybe have it as a an optional dependency. One thing I do at work is that I have a bar plugins array, and then if I, I have an if statement, like, you know, if process.env.node.env, is equal to development, or maybe if it's debug. Um, if any of those happen, that's when I would push it in. You know, do plugins that push uh, bundle. And like, oh, you know what? This is outside the scope of this video. But um, you could conceivably just make it a a flag that you uh, that you pass into your Webpack. Uh, configuration, you could make it into an, uh, an environment variable um, so that you're not running it at all times. And because it's a never ending process, that's what it would, ex it would never end and so you would, it would always be stuck. So I think, let me just delete this, I think we're done here. So we added this line over here 
and we added this line over here and a comma over here just to make sure that it's a valid uh, JavaScript um, object. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, write and close, and let's run Webpack again. I'm going to close the original window, and let's see what happens. Now, because I'm using React and Redux, I think this is going to look a little bit different in terms of um, setup. Let's go ahead and wait for it. It's taking a little bit longer, I feel like. I'm not a Webpack expert, so uh, that would make sense. It's still 1.1 megabytes, and now we have a similar but a little bit different picture. We see that the actual source is taking up a bigger part of this. So one megabyte uncompressed, 229 kilobytes compressed, and my actual source that I've written is 30 kilobytes. I don't believe it includes. Yeah, it doesn't include any JavaScript or sorry, any CSS or anything like that. It's just my source code is 30 kilobytes. So it's actually a little bit more logic than the other application. So what's making up the core of that? We have React, which is 611 kilobytes. Um, and there's a project actually called Preact, which has the React API, but it does not include uh, stuff like uh, native renderers or uh, server-side rendering. It's, it's just a trimmed down version of React. And I think it's anywhere between eight kilobytes to 16 kilobytes, something like that. It's a ridiculously small size. And so I could easily replace this React library with the Preact library and save on like half a megabyte of uncompressed code. Um, the other thing that's taken up a lot of space is the CoreJS module. Now here I'm importing the entirety of CoreJS, including stuff that I don't use. I don't use ES6 symbols. I don't use ES7 uh, observables. This is an older version, an older um, uh, update. So there's something wrong going on here. And honestly, I should not be importing all of these things if I'm using Babel to transpile everything. If we zoom in a little bit, we'll even see that ES6 symbol is getting imported several times and I'm gonna go ahead and just lower down here and there are a few um, there are a few uh, dependencies that I don't even know what they are regenerator regenerator on time uh, Re react redux I know redux is over here too I don't know what this fetch is. oh I think this is an isomorphic fetch so that's fine there's a Babel runtime um, it, this is a little bit to the corner of the screen so it's hard to see um, and low dash is taking up like barely any space um, so in this case, in this bundle, even though this bundle is smaller, I could trim it down even more by replacing this library, by getting rid of this library, and configuring Babel correctly. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, you kind of have to use your own intuition as far as what should be and should not be there and what alternatives you have to the node modules that you have. Uh, sometimes you'll find glaring mistakes like importing a node module that's not meant for the front end. So there's a ton of dependencies and it's really huge, but on the back end, it's okay. Um, Sometimes you're not going to find really much, like in the case of my Electron Markdown uh, editor, because, you know, Angular is taking up a lot of space and there's not really much else that's taking up a ton of space. And so that's that's what you're going to have to deal with. Uh, Webpack 2, I believe, still supports Webpack Bundle Analyzer. So if you are using Webpack 2, the installation process and the usage should be pretty much the same. I should also note that there are some extra um, uh, extra uh, options for the bundle analyzer. Um, I think you can do static mode where it, it will um, generate an HTML file. This would be great, I think, for like a CI or change log or something like that, just to see how that bundle changed. You can change the name of the, uh, the change the number of the port, uh, the report file name, so that the if you in case you do static for this, you know it would work. You can also disable it, which I think would be great uh, for. Like I said, you know, you're running in a production, you don't want to com comment it out, you're just gonna have a flag. And uh, you can close the open analyzer. So right now when you run it, it actually opens a new web page. And there are a few other options that you have there. You can also use it as a CLI utility, but I had a little bit of issue with that when trying to run it on Windows. Um, but that's it, if you have any questions, go ahead and tweet me on uh, Twitter, at Angenis. Um, it would be great if you guys uh, responded to the Twitter um, uh, poll if it's still up. It most likely isn't. <laughs> um, but you're welcome to uh, respond in the comments and I'd love to talk about it. You know, why it's so big, why it's so small, what you're doing. I'm always interested in any kind of feedback. So uh, thank you for watching.